Chapter 111. The Pacific. When gliding by the Bashi Isles we emerged at last upon the Great South Sea were it not for other things I could have greeted my dear Pacific with uncounted thanks for now the long supplication of my youth was answered. That serene ocean rolled eastwards from me a thousand leagues of blue. There is, one knows not what sweet mystery about this sea, whose gently awful stirrings seem to speak of some hidden soul beneath, like those fabled undulations of the Ephesian sod over the buried evangelist St. John. And meet it is that over these sea pastures, wide rolling watery prairies, and potter's fields of all four continents, the waves should rise and fall and ebb and flow unceasingly. For here, millions of mixed shades and shadows drown dreams, somnambulisms, reveries, all that we call lives and souls lie dreaming, dreaming, still tossing like slumberers in their beds, the ever rolling waves, but made so by their restlessness. To any meditative mage and rover, this serene Pacific, once beheld, must ever after be the sea of his adoption. It rolls the midmost waters of the world, the Indian Ocean and Atlantic being but its arms. The same waves wash the moles of the new belt. Californian towns but yesterday planted by the recentest trace of men and laid the faded but still gorgeous skirts of Asiatic lands older than Abraham while all between float milky ways of coral isles and low-lying endless unknown. Archipelagos and impenetrable Japan's thus this mysterious divine Pacific zones the world's whole bulk about, makes all coasts one bay to it, seems the tide beating heart of earth. Lifted by those eternal swells, you needs must own the seductive god, bowing your head to Pan. But few thoughts of Pan stir day Habas brain is standing like an iron statue at his accustomed place beside the mizen rigging with one nostril he unthinkingly snuffed the sugary musk from the bashy isles in whose sweet woods mild lovers must be walking and with the other consciously inhaled the salt breath of the new-found sea that sea in which the hated white whale must even then be swimming launched at length upon these almost final waters and gliding towards the japanese cruising ground the old man's purpose intensified itself his firm lips met like the lips of a vice the delta of his forehead's veins swelled like overladen brooks in his very sleep, his ringing cry ran through the vaulted hull, stern all. The white whale spouts thick blood, 